Hey everybody, I am Yuri Flair and I'm basically the Michael Bay of Red Rogers. Uh, I do all kinds of particle effects, the projectiles, the explosions, the beams, you name it, I do it. And today I'm going to show you a little bit of cascades and how you can achieve an effect like the light beam that's behind me. Uh, it's going to be a rather long video so I'm going to keep this short. And Take care and be sure to back this project because it's awesome. So this will be me talking a little bit about the level unlock effect. Um, as you can see in the top, there's a small light and there is a beam going down and a flash as well. And after the flash hits the floor, there will be some kind of sparks, a bit of a fade out, that kind of stuff. And I'll slowly guide you through my whole process. Well, slowly, it's probably going to be a bit fast, but it should be okay. And here we go. The first thing I do is open Photoshop and draw down a few of the effects that I imagine that I will need. So the beam, uh, a flash that's going downwards, uh, some kind of other effects, the, um, the fade out on the floor, maybe the sparks, uh, the things that I think that are necessary to uh, focus on when I'm building the whole effect. Some of the stuff will be made in 3ds Max, another part will be in Photoshop, but let's start with 3ds Max. As first, I'm going to make the beam, which is basically just a cylinder. I'll unwrap it, make sure that everything is within the 0 to 1 space, um, modify the mesh a little bit, and then call it Dunsies. In this case, I'm also going to make the spirals, and that's by making a cylinder, bend it a little bit, get a line going, and then use the Love tool to get the effect going. It's going a bit fast, so you can slow it down or wait for the video to be available on my own YouTube channel so you can see what's going on, because it's just me showing how it's done, not a whole tutorial. So now I've got uh, one of the light beams that are going upwards done. I'm going to fade it out a little bit with a vertex color. The next piece is going to be some kind of a spark effect, and I decided to not use it later on, but at this point when creating it, I did not know that. Basically, each horizontal line will be a few sparks of light, and I'm going to make a star-ish effect for that. So, I'm just modeling on, create the whole star thing. But yeah, eventually I decided to not go with it, because the results are so far. I just wasn't satisfied with it. Um, and that's totally fine, because if you make mistakes, you learn. You can improve upon it next time. And... Yeah, what else should I say? It's, it is a waste of time, of course, because you're making a, sh a shader for it. Uh, you're actually making a whole texture for it. You're modeling it out. And you can consider that a waste of time. On the other hand, if you actually... You, you learn stuff because you still are improving your workflow. You learn how to use the keyboard shortcuts. You name it. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm actually already considering it, trashing it, but sadly I did not do it. I'm trying to save it by rotating the mesh a little bit, but nah. So I just moved on to the next part. And the next part will actually be the flash that's going down. Luckily, I have a whole database with all kinds of effects already made. So I just picked the, that effect that I needed and worked upon it. This saves me a bit of the time that I lost making the whole spark thing on the floor. So I'm just modifying it a little bit. And since I already have the texture for that, it was already done. Now I'm going to import it into Unreal Engine 4. Make the right folders for it. Import the static meshes. Import the textures when needed. And also going to create a few more textures. So I'm just going to pick a few things that I think are necessary. Making a few lines, blur them out. Finding a few stock textures to give the effect an additional oomph. I mean, some of the effects I could draw myself, but it saves some time and it helps with creativity just to get a few stock textures going, fade them out, blur them, and see what you can do with the shapes, like I'm doing here. I'm also going to need some kind of a beam effect for the upward spiral light. So that's why I'm creating this effect. 
doing a little bit of hand work so that the effect looks a little bit more sophisticated. Though in the end you'll probably won't even notice it. Getting the UV so that I can actually make a whole texture for it. This helps with flow. And there's no more guessing because you know exactly where the texture is going to be. And draw out some stuff, get some effect going. And this is for the effect that I trashed on later, but the whole process is still interesting enough for me to show you guys. I'm going to merge all the layers together in the RGMB channel, which saves a little bit of uh, memory. Export it, import it into Unreal Engine 4. Set all everything correct in the settings. And uh, start with the material. I load the first mesh, get the whole material going, and see what the end result will be. It's often a little bit between just going with the flow and actually knowing what to do. Because there's a basic idea. I want a beam of light. I want it to be a little bit of the light rays going inside of that whole cylinder mesh. So then I'm just going to combine a lot of notes until I get a result that I think looks nice. I mean, I know what most of the notes do. So it's a little bit of combining, see what the results combined will give me. A little bit of editing now for the ray of light that's going upward, because that will need a mask. So that's why you see me swapping meshes in the preview, so I can use most of this shader for multiple meshes. And that saves a bit of performance. And uh, for a little bit of calculations. A few more moths going on. This one is definitely set up for uh, the beam itself. Some parameters going on so I can change everything easily in a material instance. Some emissive strength, the opacity. And get the instance going. Tweak everything for the right meshes in an instance. Play around with it a little bit, see if I'm happy with it. Maybe modify the muscle material a little bit to have a little bit more control. Trying to find an issue <laughs> that I made. It should be solved in a few. And when everything is going so fast in the video, then it's sometimes hard to see what's going on. Modifying the UVs, manipulating them so that they look better. And I'm satisfied with most of them. There we go. Now for the sparks. Set everything up and I'm already contemplating if I actually want to keep this because I don't like the result. When moving this fast, it actually looks decent, but in, the results are just subpar. There's just nothing that will make it look really good. I maybe will make a video later on to make a similar effect and actually show a good result. Oh, we'll see. Going back to the concept art, see what I need more. I'm going to need a ring. And most of the times I'll just use a quarter because in Unreal Engine 4 you can manipulate the UV so that there's so you can mirror it four times. And you get the whole circle back. Well you'll see it later. You have a little bit of detail going on in the edge, so it's not a perfect smooth circle. Get a few of the sparks going. Blur it out a little bit, sharpen the whole thing. Just get some more nice effect. Okay, still trying to save that mesh, but eventually I give up. And set up the whole circle. Going to use the same colors, so I just copy and paste that. Set up the UVs correctly. Combine the masks. And 
few parameters so I can easily change stuff in the material instance. I'm going to use the mass distorter, see how that looks. And the mass distorter is nothing more than just using the R and the G channel from the texture to manipulate the U and the V a little bit. And now it's time to set up the particle effect. First get the beam going, make sure that the pivot is correct. Set a player down, so that box is about the same size as a player. So I can make sure that all the sizes are correct. Or at least feel correct. Tweak the mesh a little bit so that there's uh, more control over it. And then get the beam going. Now it's time for the flash that moves down. First make sure that the size is correct. And then with the direct location and that kind of stuff. I'll make sure that it starts at the right height and then ends at the floor. And with size by life, I'll make sure that it goes all flat when it hits the floor. Now it's just some tweaking of values. Make sure that the mesh is correct. Get a few more material instances going. There, and start with the light at the top. A nice, a nice fleshy ring that moves outwards when the whole effect starts will give it an additional oomph. So after I set the ring at the top, I'm going to move to the ring at the bottom. Tweak it a little bit. And I want it so that when the flash hits the floor, the ring of light emits, as you can see now. And that will give it an additional nice effect, as if the whole beam dissipates over the floor. Tweaking some more, more values. Now I'm getting the spark ring in. And this will give it a little bit more of the sun effect. And now I'm going to set up the the flash that moves upward, the spiral and the light. Make sure the material is set up correctly. And make it move upwards. And this will also make it sure that it feels that a little bit of the energy that moves down is also moving back up again. And that sells the whole effect a little bit better. I'm going to try that horrible spark thing. I'm going to see if I actually can save it, but no, I won't. I won't be able to save it. I'm going to give it a few more times and then I'm going to decide nope. Now I'm going to also create a sprite for the top that gives a bit of a nice orb of light. And the same I did at the bottom with the sparks, so that there's also some more of a 3D feel to it. And now it's mostly just fine tweaking, adding the small dots of the light. Which gives it an additional oomph. I'm a huge sucker for GPU particles, because there's a lot, and all the small dotsies and moving effects just add so much to the overall effects. I just love playing with them and I tend to go over the way over the top with them. And then I have to tone them down until you get an effect like this. In the end I decided to go for a more green effect as you can see. And once it hits the floor it dissipates and the next level will be unlocked. That's basically the whole effect. That's it. Take care.